In the mid-1990s, an artificial intelligence algorithm trained on hospital admissions data came to a surprising conclusion. It saw that asthma reduced patients' risk of dying from pneumonia. This flew in the face of medical knowledge and confounded experts. Asthma should increase your risk of pneumonia, not decrease it, but the data collected from multiple hospitals seemed to be irrefutable. If you had asthma, the reduced risk of pneumonia was there. So what was going on? Well, it turned out that the artificial intelligence algorithm had missed a crucial piece of the puzzle. Doctors treating patients with asthma and pneumonia send them directly to the intensive care unit where aggressive treatment reduced their risk of dying from pneumonia. But all the artificial intelligence model saw was the correlation between having asthma and your reduced risk of pneumonia. It didn't understand the cause of that reduced risk in the first place. So luckily, people were able to identify that there was this bias, this issue in the artificial intelligence model before it was used to make decisions about how to treat patients with asthma and pneumonia. But had it been allowed, it would have led to a decrease in patient survival, contrary to what the artificial intelligence model thought in the first place. So artificial intelligence models can only learn patterns and correlations from data. And as we all know, correlation is not causation. As we've seen in the last example, understanding cause and effect is crucial for decision making. So based on this, should we trust artificial intelligence models to make decisions about you know, vital cases of life and death? Artificial intelligence algorithms are making decisions that touch many aspects of our life, you know, from TikTok and Instagram recommendations to algorithms for loan approval and medical care. So understanding how to build an AI that can, we can trust to make important decisions is vitally important. So you might say this example from the 1990s is a very long time ago. Surely we found a way to teach AI the right way to make decisions. Well, let's take a look at an example slightly closer to home. In late 2021, just as the UK's vaccine rollout program against COVID was kind of getting into full gear, an interesting tweet started trending. This tweet shows data taken from the National Office of Statistics website and it shows here the orange line is the mortality rates for those individuals who have been vaccinated against COVID. And the blue line is the mortality rates among those who have not been vaccinated. And what this shows is that people who have been vaccinated have much higher mortality rate than those who haven't. So this seems very strange, right? We had randomized control trials that showed us that these vaccines reduce mortality risk from COVID. Uh, and this data was trustworthy. It was taken from the National Office of Statistics this is the data that the UK government was using to both plan and monitor the vaccine rollout strategy. So what was going on here? If we take a closer look at how the vaccine rollout was happening in those early days of COVID, we can kind of get an understanding of what is leading to this strange correlation here. What's going on is that people early on in the vaccine rollout who received the vaccine were generally from an older age cohort because they were prioritized for early access to the vaccine. So those unvaccinated were just generally younger. And if you're younger, generally you have less kind of mortality from all other causes. So what we were seeing here in these correlations was not due to the vaccine, but actually due to the way the vaccine was rolled out. People who are older just have higher mortality in the first place. And so the main thing to take from this is that if we were to trust the correlations we were seeing from this biased data and make decisions based on them, like should we stop this vaccine rollout? Should we keep it going? Who should we target next? It would have decreased patient survival and this wouldn't have been a, a kind of great outcome. Once the UK's National Office of Statistics realized this, on their website, they took down this data and they put in its place just data looking at specific age cohorts. So comparing people vaccinated to unvaccinated in the same age bucket. And when you do that, this, this association flips back what we would have expected given we had these randomized control trials and vaccines reduce mortality. So I really believe that AI can help solve problems facing society, but for AI to benefit society, it needs to understand cause and effect. So how do we do this? How do we go about learning cause and effect? Well, let's take a little look back at our uh, vaccine example again. Why was there bias in the association between people getting the vaccine and their higher mortality? Well, the difference between people who got the vaccine and didn't get the vaccine wasn't just due to the vaccine, it was also due to their age. So age was having an influence here. And so in the randomized control trials that were performed that showed vaccines worked, why in those cases weren't there these biases and associations? 
Well, the reason is because in these control trials, people are randomly allocated to both receive the vaccine and not receive the vaccine. So their choice is taken away from them and age can no longer play a role here. They're just randomly given a vaccine or not. And the consequence of this is that if we pick somebody of a certain age who received the vaccine, we can always find someone of the same age who didn't receive the vaccine. And we can use this to try and give a signal to models to try and understand what cause and effect is going on. Uh, and over the last 30 years, a group of computer scientists and economists and epidemiologists have kind of put a lot of work into trying to understand how these signals can be used to teach machines cause and effect. Uh, and they've developed a mathematical framework called causal inference to do this. So how does this framework work in this case? So if we look at this uh, schematic example of what happened in the COVID vaccine rollout in the UK, People who received the vaccine were generally from an older age cohort, but there were still some people from a younger cohort in there. Uh, but people who didn't receive the vaccine were generally younger, although there were still some of an older co cohort who were in there as well. And so what these causal inference algorithms do is they pick somebody from the vaccinated group, and then they pay really close attention to somebody of the same age who didn't receive the vaccine, rather than people of a different age who didn't receive the vaccine. And if you do this just right, you can take this biased data and simulate what would have happened had a control trial been done. So this is shown in this schematic when we go down to the bottom when there's an equal matching of ages in both vaccinated and unvaccinated groups. And if we do this in the right way, we can really take out the bias from our data and it can from that point on understand what interventions and actions, what the consequence of those will be on future decisions. So this ability to remove bias and understand cause and effect actually gives us a brand new superpower. It lets us imagine with data. It lets us take a data set and replay it in a different scenario to see what would have happened under different situations. And from this, we can start to make better and better decisions. So one example of this is asking the following question, you know, would a patient's symptoms have been reduced had we treated a specific disease? So contrary to what actually happened, had we done something different, would their symptoms have gone away? And by doing that, can we identify what's the disease that's leading to their symptoms in the first place? So you might ask, okay, so we have ways of teaching machines cause and effect, and it seems intuitive that this should reduce uh, any bias and improve our decision-making ability. But how can we test that? What do we have in our arsenal to kind of test this hypothesis? Well, if we think about medical diagnosis, this seems like a ready-made case, right? Doctors diagnose patients by finding the disease that causes their symptom not just is correlated with their symptoms. So it feels like if we can do something there, we can show that understanding cause and effect is really important. So here's a little example to try and drive that point home. So suppose a patient presents with shortness of breath and chest pain. Now, an artificial intelligence model looking at this data might say, okay, well, they have those two symptoms. That means that they're likely belong to the part of the population that's overweight. And if they belong to that part of the population, again, with some likelihood, they have type two diabetes. And so we'll conclude from this process that there's a strong association between type 2 diabetes, shortness of breath, and chest pain. The issue with that is if we were to treat type 2 diabetes by giving insulin, say, it would not reduce that patient's symptoms because there is no causal link between type 2 diabetes, shortness of breath, and chest pain. This diagram that you're seeing here was constructed by medical professionals who use their domain knowledge and all of the trials they've done in medicine to tell us which types of risk factors and symptoms and diseases cause each other and so forth. And the, as you can see, diabetes is not a cause of these things. So if that artificial intelligence model could understand cause and effect, it could hopefully output the correct diagnosis in this case, what's the right disease to treat to reduce that patient's symptoms. Okay, so some collaborators of mine and I were really interested in testing this out in a proper way. So how did we go about doing this in a way that isn't just based on some simple examples? Well. We went and got a panel of doctors to create 1,600 medical case studies, and these involve things like the details of the patient, evidence, their history, and so forth, and then they also gave the disease that they said would be causing these symptoms. Um, and so we had these 1,600 cases. We then got 44 doctors who weren't involved in creating these case studies, and we gave them this test, so to say. Gave them the evidence, gave them the patient information, didn't tell them what the disease was, and they had to come up with that, diagnose the patient themselves. And we tried to see, okay, how many times did they get that right over these 1,600 cases? So to compare how well doctors did then to how well a standard artificial intelligence model would do, as well as an artificial intelligence model that's been taught how to understand cause and effect, 
we then trained these models and compared them to the doctors. What we found was, was quite interesting. So a standard artificial intelligence model placed as good as almost the average doctor, so in the top 50% of doctors. But when you just taught that exact same artificial intelligence model how to recognize cause and effect, all of a sudden they were jumped, jumping up to the top 25% of doctors. So they were better than 75% of the doctors in our 44 doctor cohort. So this really shows that just understanding cause and effect, that additional bit of information, really results in kind of expert medical kind of accuracy in this case, which was really interesting. And so what was, what's cool about this is understanding cause and effect now we've shown leads to improved decision making. But it's not important just for kind of medical or you know, um, uh, health related decision making processes. It's also important for many others, right? There are automated algorithms for hiring now that screen CVs and come to conclusions. There are algorithms that decide whether somebody should be approved for a mortgage or not. And in order to make these trustworthy and for us to have confidence that they're coming to the right conclusions, these methods can be directly applied. And they can even be applied to help Spotify try and pick what your next favorite song might be. But what was really important in all these cases was in order for us to remove bias from the data, we had to be able to articulate where that bias is in the first place. Right? Once we could do that, we could take it out using these methods. But the only way that we can articulate what type of bias we want to remove is, is by using the human perspective. Right? What biases are we okay with? Which ones are we not okay with? And so far from being made redundant and obsolete by AI, the human perspective is going to be even more vital in the age of AI if we want to make trustworthy decisions. Thanks very much.